The translation has been started. The only thing I need is to be sure that uh, the translation is on on your computers, on your devices. Okay, perfect. As I can see, the translation has been turned on. Uh, I'm glad to welcome you all here, dear colleagues. Today uh, we uh, uh, will conduct additional part of uh, the webinar, uh, which will take place uh, one week ago. Uh, it was a webinar about bleach restorations, but unfortunately, maybe fortunately, in frames uh, of uh, uh, last time timing, uh, we didn't uh, find the opportunity to cover all the topics we wanted to uh, disclose and the last, uh, the very last stage of finishing uh, was, uh, wasn't, uh, wasn't disclosed, that's why today we're gonna uh, cover it all uh, and I'm gonna show you uh, finishing in all of the details uh, with all steps and instruments uh, and uh, after that the discussion time um, I think maybe two three hours uh, the intended timing of today's part uh, with one or two breaks as previous time I will uh, uh, decided to the moments of, of the breaks uh, basing on my own uh, feelings. Just a second, please. This is the view of restoration, the same restoration as last time. After the layering, and now we're gonna start finishing procedure. Uh, as I told you, uh, finishing procedure has a few general uh, parts, few stages. Uh, first one is anatomical contouring. The task is removing of general excesses, uh, huge excesses of, uh, of the volume and the bringing to uh, the same dimensions of uh, the teeth we work with. Um, these case um, we, we work with uh, two incisors uh, and uh, uh, I will overcome this first stage of anatomical contouring in the scale of two central incisors. Then second uh, stage is uh, grounding, uh, the longest and the most important on which we modified the, the surface and uh, alongside with it we cut all the smallest uh, anatomical elements of morphology of texture with the using of different um, uh, rotary instruments of different ab abrasiveness level third stage is uh, polishing uh, the task is uh, making the surface uh, uh, glossy but with saving of uh, all the nuances of uh, texture and anatomy. So I will start from uh, the viewing of both restorations. As you can see, I have a uh, quite big amount of excesses, volumetric excesses here on the tooth I work with uh, last time and uh, with which I finished the layering completely. So now I need to remove uh, these excesses and also uh, 
adjust the position of side verges, at least medial side verges. Medial side verges uh, should be done at, at this stage. Uh, distal side verges wasn't applied. They, uh, um, if we would imagine that uh, the work would uh, uh, go farther and uh, after layering of lateral incisors only then uh, distal walls uh, would be covered with the material and only on that uh, mo moment and on that stage uh, side verges uh, would uh, be adjusted on a position now we have here uh, insufficient volume of composite because the distal surface uh, this part wasn't covered with the material. Uh, in, the, in the method I work with usually, uh, as I described you and demonstrate in the scale of two incisors, uh, 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 side surfaces uh, cover with composite uh, when we work with the second tooth. So after finishing of them, uh, clinically, uh, I make an isolation of a lateral incisor alongside with the central one. Uh, for example, uh, this incisor 102 and uh, the nearby incisor, central incisor 101. The clamp, uh, this case, would be adjusted on the se second lateral incisor uh, and the layering uh, would be performed in the uh, in this scale of medial uh, vestibular uh, surface of lateral incisor and medial surface of the same incisor and distal surface of the nearby tooth. Mm, but uh, lateral incisors are not uh, our today's task and, and uh, we, uh, we just haven't time uh, to do them. That's why we, we're going to focus on the central incisors and uh, uh, we're going to work with the adjustment on, of the side verges, mesial walls. Of that areas where the composite was completely applied and all the layers was applied as well. So, uh, as previously, in the moments uh, when my commands uh, will not be very and relevant and very necessary, uh, I, I will turn on the music. So I'm gonna start my work with using of uh, upper country angle hempis and the uh, diamond pore uh, of this shape. Candle flame, candle flame uh, shape. Uh, I like it because it has a taper, it has a conical uh, work and part uh, design with the thin tip and more significant diameter of the medial part. So that's why by changing the angle we can remove composites from uh, different surface more wide and more narrow to make uh, the, the grooves of, of different sizes. Also uh, in the process of um, first stage uh, of anatomical contouring, we're going to widely use uh, diamond discs from 3M of first and second level of abrasiveness, the most aggressive one, for removing composites from the plane surface where it will be necessary. Um, uh, discs are usually uh, very good for uh, adjustment the side verges and work with the proximal surface, with, with the border between proximal and vestibular surface. And also, um, one of my favorite instruments for uh, contouring as well is Enhance. Widely known, very widespread around the world. You probably know this instrument. It has sufficient abrasiveness uh, for effective removing of composites on the big surface um, and we can use here on this rogue stage, uh, stage of rogue uh, countering and making rogue anatomical um, sketch uh, on the surface. Uh, enhances of different 
uh, shapes, uh, in the shape of a cone, in the shape of a disc, and in the shape of a cup. Uh, the abrasiveness level may be different, uh, it depends on the pressure which we apply on a handpiece. Uh, in case we apply more significant pressure on the handpiece, the composite removes uh, quickly uh, and the reducing activity much more high. In the case we apply not very uh, strong pressure on the handpiece, uh, we can uh, work, you know, more delicately. Delicately, uh, we can remove composites less significantly and not so fast. And so that's why this instrument has uh, um, features for not only for country but also for uh, grounding for the next stage. I'm gonna work with so As you can see, uh, I, I've got a few excesses uh, of adhesive system after applying of the last layer. Uh, when I uh, make the uh, groove, the uh, cavity right here near the cutting third for um, mamelons applying, uh, I think on that stage uh, some of adhesive system was uh, spreaded. Uh, here to the gingiva. That's why we have now here uh, something like excesses and of course we need to remove them. Fortunately uh, they locate not so very deep under the gingiva as it usually is in the clinical practice. Considering that I have uh, quite a big amount of excesses on the uh, uh, first central incisor, um, I better to take something, uh, some instrument which can affect more significant surface, more wide surface. And I think the best choice uh, is the enhance. I'm going to start from the shape of a disc.
So how can we uh, get the understanding of the side verge position? I told you that we see side verges uh, uh, on looking on a light reflection. So now we have some uh, glows and actually can check the position. But uh, before that, when I work with Bohr or uh, after working with the disc, diamond disc from 3M uh, the surface is glossless so how can we exactly understand where the position of the side verge is we can make it with the pencil uh, to make a markup of side verge we need to uh, put we need to take uh, just ordinary pencil uh, and uh, adjust it on the angle of 45 approximately 45 degrees uh, to uh, uh, to uh, how can I say it uh, how can I say this this plane uh, the, the, this plane I don't remember in English the name of this plane so uh, well, I hope you understand the position, uh, 45 degree to uh, the plane uh, coming in uh, this uh, direction, uh, splitting the, uh, the face on two parts, uh, and uh, make emotions up down. How can we uh, understand that uh, the line was applied on the original position of the side verge of the current on the current position if we make this motion uh, and mark a few times uh, the line will always be on on one place on the same place uh, so uh, after making the markups we need to look on them and try to, to understand the differences between one and the nearby uh, and the nearby line if they are not very symmetrical we need to uh, change one or another one uh, closer to the uh, contact area or maybe differently from the contact area to, to the direction of the central part of the tooth so as we can see here in this particular case uh, the line of the tooth I work with of this incisor in this area too close to the contact area more close to this line I like this line more so how can we uh, decide uh, what which position of side verge is will be good for us actually basing on our own perception mm, when we work uh, and when we do fragmental restoration without covering of the whole vestibular surface in the scale of a few teeth uh, or, or only one tooth um, in, in the scale of one or a few teeth from one side and we have uh, intact teeth from another side and we need to do exactly as, as they are uh, and we need to imitate the position of uh, them side verges too so these cases we have a concrete reference which we need to follow uh, and we, which we need to imitate imitate symmetrically uh, when we do something new when we do veneering when we do bleach restorations uh, we have no any reference except uh, our imagination and how the work is actually um, um, uh, uh, is actually look looks like because uh, you know, we apply material uh, without uh, 
frequently thoughts about side verges. Sometimes it so happened that the side verge, uh, um, after layering with the left sand matrix, uh, uh, bringing to one or another position, and this position may be good, and uh, and the position of the nearby side verge may be not very good, and we just need to mark up them uh, in this method and then decide. Usually, uh, I look on. Uh, side verges as they are. Uh, I choose one of it. In this particular case, I choose the side verge and decided to uh, use it as the reference for this one. And actually, this one is uh, quite close to uh, the uh, nearby side verge. Uh, w just a few changes should be done for bringing this side verge in the same position as the, this one, uh, as this. Uh, the nearby uh, incisor demonstrate us. Uh, sometimes when I start to work with uh, with the teeth on the stage of contouring, uh, there are no any uh, good looking side verges. So in this case, I just continue my work uh, of reducing of excesses. I uh, reduce uh, them with all the instruments I described you previously. And uh, after some time of this work, I usually take a pencil, make a markup. So of course, the markup itself will uh, look different after some part of work of removing of the composite. Uh, and after that, uh, maybe after a few times uh, of trying the side verge automatically uh, bringing to the, uh, you know, good-looking, desirable position. Without any efforts from my side, without any reference, which I can use here. So we just basing on that uh, side virtue, which looks better. From two, uh, these case, from two incisors we work with. So now I need to bring the position of this side virtue to the same uh, um, place an angle as this one has. take a disc, diamond disc of 3M of not, not very big size and uh, and remove the excesses from uh, open part of the proximal surface as well. So this way we can uh, shift side verge from the contact area to more to the central part of the tooth. If we need to shift side verge closer to the contact area, we need to affect vestibular surface with something like enhance or diamond burr. 
uh, if we need to do differently from uh, the contact area uh, the only one way is to use a disc Actually, this way of sharpening uh, of any conical instrument, I just take a bore, uh, I take the instrument I need to sharpen, and do like this. Uh, especially relevant trick for enhance. I wanted to tell you that uh, finishing and uh, uh, cutting the morphology is the process uh, which require, requires not a uh, yeah, significant uh, pressure force but uh, you know very delicate and accurate work and constant controlling. It's not about pressure, it's about uh, the uh, uh, the uh, quality of your motions, the microcontrol and and everything uh, which is basing on on your vision. So that's why. I just repeated information from the previous part of the webinar. You need to work without water cooling and not with the very high uh, rotation speed. Uh, now, the, the maximum uh, um, rotation speed at my dental chair uh, is uh, uh, adjusted on the, uh, on the level of 25, 25,000 uh, RPM. Well, but of course, uh, the concrete rotation speed at the moment of time uh, depends on the pressure um, on, 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 the, on the device. So if my pressure on the pedal higher, the rotation speed is also same higher. We shouldn't... Uh, do it too strong and we shouldn't work too fast with constant controlling 
of uh, the uh, visual condition of of the shakers, there is one uh, more risk of the procedure finishing in the case of bleach restorations and that we can easily with using of uh, excessive pressure on the handpiece remove uh, uh, remove some part of uh, bleach uh, layers and disclose the previous shape especially it will be relevant in the cases like this of a of a very dark uh, native shade of the patient's teeth. So that's why be very careful. Uh, don't use high pressure and don't use uh, high rotation speed because uh, your motions should be even more uh, careful um, and and more precisely rather than on uh, natural shade. A restoration when you work with natural shades. This way I remove some excesses of adhesive system. From uh, this area. And also re release some free space for, uh, for the disc. As you can see, the mobility of uh, teeth uh, on the model here higher uh, than the normal cavity, of course, uh, and they they can a little bit shift uh, orally or vestibulary, and also a little bit rotate. That's why initially, when I just start to uh, analyze the volume, uh, this tooth uh, uh, was much higher because it was like this but it's at all because of uh, of higher mobility level so yeah almost almost done
Yeah, I think the position of side verges is uh, almost uh, like it should be. Uh, maybe some uh, small corrections should be done as well, but I could make them later. Uh, overcoming uh, all the next stages. Now, uh, I think that the countering may be considered as uh, uh, as ended and the uh, next stage is grounding as you uh, probably can guess before making uh, the grounding before making the morphology uh, I recommend you to make something like a sketch of beautiful uh, of uh, future uh, good-looking morphology with using of your pencil on the surface of the tooth you work with or teeth is read just a few uh, markups with the pencil uh, the essence of them uh, is uh, um, visualization of the future ridges position as you remember we have a few ridges central uh, two side ridges mesial and distal big side ridges additional vertical ridges and horizontal ridges. We need to apply uh, at least that elements which are located uh, vertically in vertical direction. So side ridges, central ridge, and additional ridges as well. Before I uh, cut them out. So I have a pencil, but my pencil is quite uh, rogue. We need to sharpen it. We can do it with knife, scalpel, or with the uh, disc as well. I'm gonna do it with this. Okay, now I need to make a sketch. Uh, when we do this sketch, we need to apply areas and make a contours of areas where one or another ridge will be located. I'm gonna start from medial uh, and distal side ridges. So this is the line which separate and uh, make visible the border on the vestibular surface of mesial ridge. So this is the area of mesial side ridge. Now I need to apply the area of distal side ridge, which should be located probably here. When we do this sketch, we can look at uh, natural teeth examples on pictures or on gypsum models or something. We can uh, look at something natural, some natural incisors or teeth rate. Something we can create uh, from our imagination, like I do now. So then, uh, we need to mar mark up the position of central ridge, and this uh, uh, this is the border of central ridge. <sighs> so this is a uh, uh, concave parts. And this is a convex parts. So then we have uh, two uh, free areas between side ridges and central ridge here. And uh, one of the tasks is uh, uh, distribution of this space for uh, 
small vertical additional ridges. As you remember, between main ridges, central and side ridges, we can find big amount, especially in the, sh in the case of triangular shaped incisors, big amount of additional vertical uh, ridges. And we need to split these areas uh, on a few uh, additional spaces for each uh, vertical additional ridge. And the main requirement uh, to make it more natural uh, is not uh, is that you don't uh, sorry that you shouldn't do it symmetrically I mean uh, mutual and distal part uh, should be split uh, on two equal parts and equally uh, from the point of uh, this stylistic I'm gonna split them on additional parts differently so here will be one additional reach like this another one quite short here this one will be bigger and here I would uh, apply additional reach small one so we have four ridges here one two three and four this one is the biggest and uh, now we need to split this area onto few ridges uh, as well but do it differently so this one will, will, will be short another one also same short but located here near the uh, central part and another one here which starts from this area comes uh, to the lower third and here disappears and also if you remember in cases when we have a quite uh, wide quite big size central reach we need to uh, we, we can apply and it will be really good looking uh, we will follow uh, to a natural uh, possible variation of uh, shapes uh, we can apply a small additional uh, roof on the central reach when this reach is big enough and I think that this reach central reach we have here is quite big so I'm gonna apply this additional reach here not reach sorry roof additional roof here so uh, and this is a sketch of future uh, grooves but we thought by using of the ridges of, uh, of the ridges spaces so we uh, thought and we create this sketch uh, thinking about uh, volumetric parts but in the end the lines uh, we've got we've got uh, are grooves but we thought about ridges I hope you understand this different because usually when doctors uh, following to these methods start to uh, apply um, pencil markups and make something like a sketch of future morphology they thinking about the grooves and get something like this uh, just absolutely uh, artificially looking uh, v-shaped grooves uh, but they are not a part of the contour of the dimensions we have on the truth we work with it's absolutely uh, uh, absolutely far from uh, individual characteristic of the tooth so that's why we need to 
uh, apply this sketch thinking about the ridges. After that, after the applying, uh, we would better to uh, make them more uh, relevant, uh, more uh, not relevant, more uh, uh, I don't I forgot this word uh, more stable, more stable, more uh, stable in, uh, in the perspective of our future manipulations uh, to make them visible um, during the work we, we need to convert these uh, pencil markups into uh, superficial textural markups I mean uh, the following work with rotary instruments with uh, with the bars with uh, enhances will very quickly uh, remove all these uh, pencil markups and uh, uh, we will uh, lose our reference. We'd better to look at this sketch during some more or less significant time during the work because uh, this is the sketch uh, and the scheme of the future position of elements. That's why we need to make them more reliable. Uh, the, the markups should be more reliable. Mm, pencil markups are very superficial and uh, can be removed uh, with a few uh, touches of the finger. That's why uh, to make them more reliable, we'd better to repeat them on the same places with using of diamond, diamond bore. I just take diamond bore and carefully, without pressure, not deep, very superficial, make a markup. On the same place. I just convert pencil markups as I tell you to the superficial markups. It's better to do that because uh, otherwise without this repeating pencil markups will be uh, removed very quickly. And we can just uh, deliberately remove them with finger and as you can see the grooves are still there and we can fold to them. They are more uh, better visualized this way. But once again without strong pressure very carefully because uh, diamond pore is something which you can uh, easily make the picture worth and make uh, and uh, you know uh, uh, overcome the uh, necessary that of the relief and and get the spotting because of it so all the following work will be uh, done previously with using of two instruments of enhance in the shape of a cone this is the new one, but uh, you probably know that new uh, conical shape and hands tips are uh, very uh, poorly centered and uh, um, big amount of vibrations uh, appear because of this reason and the working process will not be controllable enough. That's why uh, I sharpen new enhances in the shape of a cone uh, always with the with diamond pour just as I showed you uh, some time ago today uh, I did it with uh, with old enhanced 
conical shape in hands to make it more sharp. And I always make it uh, with uh, working with the new conical shape uh, in hands tips. But for making the uh, the shape better and to center it uh, in hand piece, to remove possible vibrations or uh, at least to decrease uh, the amount. Also, one of the main instruments on the stage of uh, grounding is Jota. Jota polishing kit. I showed you uh, last time on presentation. The green one is uh, Jota step one for grounding. It, it removes composites quite uh, effectively, but with a delicate surface. It really good centered and uh, uh, it has a uh, uh, quite quite high resistance uh, for uh, wearing so it wears out very uh, slowly especially uh, comparing with enhance absolutely not the same instruments and I frequently use this uh, instrument, Jota Step 1, the green one for grounding, for removing of the all 90%, uh, 95% of uh, the anatomical uh, elements uh, uh, position on the relief and so on. It's a really nice instrument. Without water, with the medium or small pressure. Now I'm going to work with these two mentioned instruments, uh, modifying uh, the sketch I did. Of course, the sketch is just a uh, preliminary, um, preliminary intended uh, position of the future elements of the uh, uh, position of the grooves and ridges. The final picture may be different. Uh, the final picture depends of uh, many factors, including air pores and bubbles, air bubbles which uh, may be um, disclosed while the uh, finishing procedure. And of course, on the place of air pore, where the air pore uh, uh, will be open uh, and will not be will big enough, uh, very huge. Uh, in, in these mentioned areas, uh, the groove should be located. But it may be the groove in, uh, located not on the place we intended before. So that's why this sketch may be uh, changed uh, during the following pro procedure, during the following actions, but nothing bad in it. It's just a sketch. I told you that it's not something, uh, um, something uh, uh, harshly determining the uh, our all future um, uh, actions and the uh, morphological uh, uh, elements position. So that's why you can do it freely and you can change it if you want. But mainly, of course, I'm gonna uh, fold to this uh, sketch. So now, if you don't mind, we're gonna make short break, maybe five minutes, five, maybe seven minutes. And after that, we're gonna continue uh, grounding uh, stage, which is quite long.
Hi everyone. Uh, let's go further. So, as I told you, now I will uh, uh, improve the surface, improve all of that grooves with using of two instruments, mainly with Enhance and with Jota Step 1, the green uh, polisher. Before using Enhance, considering that it is new, I remove some uh, some volume from the, this instrument this way to uh, sharpen it and to make it more uh, uh, better century. I use enhance in that areas where I need to remove uh, composites from a larger surface uh, and uh, Jota in that areas where I need to improve narrow grooves and some uh, small elements.
you probably notice that uh, when I do uh, uh, repeated uh, repeating uh, motions with using a very tip of the instrument on the same place like this I can create a groove with the sharp edges uh, if I need to make something some groove uh, less deep less sharp I just make interrupting motions like this more wide and I just combine these two type of motions closer to the cutting third in that area where the uh, relief and morphology should be uh, you know less aggressive because of higher level of rearing uh, because of the abrasion level uh, I uh, do more wide motions interrupting motions like this in that area is where I need to make the groove more uh, more deep to visualize it better I repeat vertical uh, vertical touches on the same places with the very tip of the instrument and I follow from making the uh, mic relief I follow from the cutting third to the neck area not differently because when I uh, uh, go from this side to the cervical area I can clearly see uh, where I go the path of the instrument uh, and uh, if I would try to work differently from neck area uh, following to the cutting third the instrument it's, uh, himself the holder of the instrument will uh, close the following way of the instrument that's why it will be more controllable we're gonna work uh, from here to here and of course without water cooling very carefully uh, remembering uh, remembering that uh, uh, the depth of the relief should be uh, quite delicate uh, and we shouldn't overcome the first layer of white uh, if you remember we apply aesthetics white for covering the previous shade uh, to avoid spotting of the surface
So as you can see, I tried to adjust the model and the tooth in the way to put the light reflection from the main source, source uh, light source I use for illumination of the working area uh, exactly in that uh, place uh, where the, the main actions are performed or take place. Uh, that's why I always shift the model, uh, I always move it to change the position of light reflection and I do the same work with the patients. Of course, when I work with patient, it's not very, uh, mm, uh, but it's, it's not possible to very easily change the, the position with, uh, with microscope. Uh, uh, because the microscope is more or less stable instrument and it's not very maneuverable. But we can do the same actually uh, shifting uh, and moving the patient's head. Uh, he will be glad to, to, uh, you, to feel some dynamic because uh, before that on the stage of layering he was a few hours without any motion at all and this is something uh, which make him uh, feel uh, feels uh, alive and that's why he will probably be glad uh, to uh, move his head a bit and neck so that's why we need to constantly change the position and see the light in the area we work you see because otherwise uh, if I would try to for example uh, work not here with where the light reflection is uh, uh, located but here I would hardly uh, be able to control the procedure I can control it only here because here I can see exactly what I get even after a few smallest motions and I can uh, decide should I continue the work in the same direction or maybe I should uh, change the stylistic, uh, uh, the pressure, the direction of the motion and so on. So it, it may be controllable only within the light reflection. Don't forget about it. It's really important stage, and when when we make um, our, our hands-on courses, when uh, other doctors uh, start to work with models and start to overcome the same uh, procedure, uh, this is quite widespread uh, um, reason uh, of they not, you know, very. Uh, uh, high productivity because they can't do the same not because the wrong motions not because of uh, the wrong instrument but because of the wrong position of the model they uh, take it like this or even like this and work somewhere here while we need to work uh, in the position uh, 
of light reflection. I hope you understand it. Now we can start to make uh, horizontal grooves. Uh, we didn't uh, mark up them uh, on the stage of pencil uh, sketch applying because all the horizontal grooves and ridges should be done uh, after vertical because they are not so deep as vertical more superficial elements uh, and we can do them we can imitate that uh, 
Uh, horizontal grooves usually located uh, near the cerv cervical area and maybe in the middle part with the same instrument with a Jota uh, uh, green tip. The only thing we need to change is to change our position uh, on 9 hours approximately and change the position of the instrument himself uh, on this one. I told you that uh, this is not the smallest cross creation. Now I uh, talk about uh, more significantly sized uh, grooves located uh, in the first two uh, health, uh, th first two thirds of the tooth, and with with the following motions, uh, concentrating the efforts, con concentrating the pressure on the tip between uh, ridges in the places of the grooves. Previously, uh, we need to make uh, something like a pits. horizontally on the same level this way we will uh, be able to imitate them like they are on natural teeth like this I use very tip of the instrument point not the whole procedure uh, after cutting them out we need to uh, take instrument in the standard position and remove them from that places where they shouldn't be uh, located especially from the top of the ridges from the most most volumetric part because they are located between them in the grooves areas And don't forget that you always uh, need to think about the uh, the relief depth, and you should not exaggerate it. The risks are too high.
with relief, with morphology is really interesting, but it takes a very big amount of time, because especially in such cases where we need to create it from the beginning, when we have no any reference, a concrete reference, like a nearby tooth. This is the situation uh, when we work with bleach veneers. With, with any veneers, we need to create something absolutely new. Some relief scheme which will uh, uh, fit to the patient's face, to his smile, to his requirements. and so on. It's not so easy to do, but it's worse to do, of course. Now I just make some uh, vertical grooves sharper. And if you remember, I also, among the other things, I told you about uh, the smallest cross uh that one which is called perichematia. And uh, if you remember, I told you that the best instrument for the imitation of this smallest cross uh may be just an ordinary uh, diamond bore with a uh, uh, blue stripe. The diamond coating of this bore has quite a big size of particles. But this size is uh, usually exactly what we need for imitation of them. Uh, to make, uh, to imitate them, I take a diamond bore with the blue stripe and very, very carefully make motions like this. In this manner, we should be extremely carefully uh, performing this stage because uh, with uh, excessive pressure, we can fuck up everything which were done before. And of course, it's not all. After that, we need to take uh, Jota green tip once again and remove the cross frustration from that areas where they shouldn't be located.
it's very hard to to get uh, to catch um, a necessary level of uh, of expressiveness of relief expressiveness to make it uh, visible uh, to make it uh, live but without uh, exaggerating the depth of the grooves and so on uh, uh, many times in clinical practice when I do it I, uh, I uh, uh, have to remove something I created to uh, change this, the, this sketch, the scheme uh, make it uh, make the relief smoother because as you can see when I work with the details I can't see the teeth rate I can see even one tooth uh, in all of the dimensions just one uh, small area of it and uh, I, when I deeply in work I can't control the general view the final view of uh, the morpho morphology uh, and then um, when I just uh, make the um, magnification uh, not so very big or sometimes I remove the microscope at all and look just with neck eyes on the teeth um, and uh, sometimes I see that the aggressiveness uh, the expressiveness is too high and sometimes we need to reduce it uh, without uh, removing of morphology uh, uh, all of it uh, down to plain surface and if we need to do something like this we can take uh, this instrument uh, when we need to uh, uh, decrease the expressiveness and a little bit polish the surface I usually take uh, this instrument called uh, it's a polisher from dance ply called Pogo uh, and uh, it allows us to remove some uh, by increasing uh, the pressure somewhere we need it we can remove the expressiveness with saving of uh, the main amount of of details on the surface and usually this is the first instrument on, on the uh, polishing stage the third and last stage of finishing And as you can see with the effect on the very top of the ridges, this instrument, uh, especially uh, in the shape of a cup, uh, removes prostration. But between the ridges, uh, prostration is still there. Exactly what we need. And this instrument allows us to uh, uh, to imitate uh, natural uh, wearing level of course uh, alongside with the improving of vestibular surface I need to improve prop, uh, internal surface as well and remove some excesses from there they already been removed uh, almost all of them maybe just a little bit Cut the volume. Like this. Uh, we don't need to get relief on inner palatal surface. Uh, uh, that's why we can do it quick, uh, more quickly, uh, just with enhance and with pogo after that.
So, second instrument uh, uh, on the polishing stage will be Jota, step two. Polisher of gray color uh, and uh, we can use it even for uh, getting the final gloss level. to improve for with this instrument horizontal grooves as well keeping it uh, horizontally on uh, the position of when we take the position of on nine hours as you can see this instrument uh, has uh, a uh, really nice feature uh, to make the grooves softer alongside with polishing. It makes it softer and make the borders of the grooves softer of the ridges uh, and also improve the surface. The reducing activity is really low. For this instrument, sometimes I increase the rotation speed a little bit higher rather than previous instruments uh, up to 27, 25 thousand rotation per minute. Don't get 
the optical content uh, becomes visible only now when I uh, start the procedure of polishing. Before that, you probably thought that uh, where the all the optical nuances which were uh, we uh, laid down uh, on the previous stages. So the last instrument uh, in polishing uh, stage is uh, special. Uh, gray color uh, spiral discs from Eve Diacom. Very simple and user friendly instrument. You can use any type of pressure, any uh, type uh, and direction of motions, uh, and the gloves will be very high in all of possible variations of it using. In places where the uh, uh, the sclerotical uh, mammalons were imitated, uh, we can do something like a smallest uh, bits. Because usually it's curly. Once again, better to do them uh, asymmetrically. One of it sharper and higher, another one uh, wider, but not so sharp. Uh, also, we, uh, with using of diamond bore, we can improve. Uh, we can improve uh, the halo effect. That yellow stripe, which running alongside with the uh, cutting outline, we can do it with uh, di uh, diamond bore or or with any type of bore. Uh, in order to avoid uh, a necessity of the polishing of the bevel which we need to make on inner surface, I usually take this type of uh, bore, it's not diamond bore, it's a uh, metallic bore uh, with the yellow stripe uh, like a polisher. By looking on, uh, so, uh, uh, by looking on a vestibular surface, we work with it on inner surface and make a bevel there. And this way we can uh, increase uh, increase the uh, the hell effect. I don't know how much it visible for you. I can see it clearly in microscope. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the hell effect is good enough. It's running here. 
it increases here and uh, at the same time we uh, uh, make um, you know uh, a differentiation of the visual position of mammalons imitate some sclerotic mammalons as for side walls uh, and interproximal areas um, considering the fact that the uh, left sand matrix we used uh, for uh, bringing the, com the composite there in that area so we uh, could avoid all the overhangings in these areas the only thing I need is to put there uh, left sand stripe I use uh, left and stripes from 3M. I just try to find it here in my uh, in my table because my assistants didn't prepare it for me. Uh, just wait a second, please. Probably uh, nothing new for you uh, in these aspects. I'm sure that you do the same in your work. Where that strikes. Ah, here is it. No. This type of stripes for 3M soft legs, uh, we can find uh, two types of these stripes, uh, one of it. Uh, as a higher uh, abrasiveness level, another one lower. Firstly, I take that one which is higher. It has a two surfaces. With using of the middle part, I bring it there in interproximal area and start to work with it. With at first abrasive part, removing overhangings. Then I uh, input this stripe uh, deeper, uh, trying to uh, use uh, another surface of this stripe which has less level of abrasiveness for pre-polishing. Okay, and then we can make uh, stripe number two from the same brand. Uh, which has a much lower abrasiveness level and uh, higher polishing capacities. So this way. Nothing special, nothing new. Uh, generally, it was uh, the whole things I wanted to show you in the scale of one tooth. Uh, uh, I decided to stop on the, on one tooth and finish the work only with uh, with one ins of incisors I work with, because uh, uh, trying to do second one, all the motions, all the steps will be the same. Uh, considering that the record of this webinar of the first and second part will be available for you uh, without any limits uh, within one month after uh, you can endlessly uh, watch it uh, and repeat all, all the same uh, stages uh, again and again uh, I would uh, uh, stop on, on this moment, uh, stop the demonstration uh, and the uh, second stage, the last stage, will be discussion. And if you don't mind, we're going to make short break, around 5-7 minutes. After that, uh, during following 30-40 minutes, I'm going to ask 
uh, I'm gonna answer on your questions. So you can prepare them uh, while we will overcome the break. I always wanted to do something important in life, to fulfill my true potential and professional ambitions, and I'm ready to take up new challenges that come my way. I patiently follow my path, no matter if it is hard. I kept going forward. I kept going forward because I know the taste of victories and achievements. I like to wake similar ambitions in people, light the fuse of enthusiasm, motivate them to rise higher and become more professional. On our Zen course, we are emphasizing uncertain soul contrast. Make our participants believe in themselves. Break the stereotypes. We teach them to not only look, but to see. To not just think, but to reason. This way it takes a lot of time and intensive work. Only smile desires accomplished fast. It's very hard and uncomfortable to fight with your own imperfections. However, a man doesn't feel pound of a battlefield till he gains first victory. And when we're winning, we realize our importance. We start enjoying it. 
I love the moment when I start seeing signs of determination in the eyes of other participants. The moment when the movements become firm and precise. Behind bright success, there is always simple, tiring, and concentrated labor standing behind. You have to wait first for knowledge and experience in yourself. Be ambitious. Be aggressive. Work with complicated and refractory intellectual material. Challenge yourself. Become better. Find your way to us. Start your way of Zen. Dr. Viktor Serbakov, um, I thought he's good, 
Now I think he's genius. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, once again, thank you for the opportunity to uh, fill uh, my cup with coffee. I'm ready to answer your questions. Before that, uh, I would like to pay your attention on uh, Zen course, international hands-on Zen course. Uh, with duration of six days, which will be at uh, March from 22nd up to 27th. Uh, uh, before the COVID, we make uh, these courses in Moscow uh, with duration of three days. Now, considering that uh, Russia and Moscow is not very um, uh, open place for making the courses because of uh, restrictions, uh, pandemic restrictions. Uh, we decided to make this course under our own uh, own uh, organization uh, with the uh, Zen course team in Dubai, uh, which is much more open place with uh, all desert conditions. And we're going to make this uh, intensive hands-on very extended from the point of timing with very uh, uh, unstandard uh, atmosphere and uh, uh, you can find all the details on this website which I show you now you, uh, on the screen uh, uh, 3W share uh, Dubai 2022.com you can find this uh, this address uh, here in in the chat. I leave the uh, the the link on it. So now I I gonna answer your questions. I'm gonna start from the last one. Please, I have a question about this case. Did you put Mamelon? Uh, and clear without palatal shell behind. Yes, yes, it is. It was behind. It, it was w without uh, um, a palatal shell at all. Uh, something like a free modeling. Um, even even more. Uh, I apply some mammalons before just in free modeling uh, methods uh, and. Um, uh, then I decided to uh, adjust the shape of mamelons with using a rotary instrument, something like a cut cut back, 
uh, methods um, in the, in case of dental technicians. Uh, so I apply some dentin core, mammalons, and then uh, cut them a bit to adjust and clarify the shape. After yes, after that uh, I put uh, uh, ma make uh, adhesive preparation of the composite uh, without sandblasting, but uh, with uh, wiping the surface with uh, um, ethanol. Uh, after that, uh, second bottle of Optibon EFL and Estelite color clear, clear uh, behind the mammalons. So another question is, what do you use in photography? Uh, ring flash, twin or soft box for cases? Well, I have um, I have different flashes, so different light sources for. Um, uh, for my work for uh, photography of clinical cases mainly uh, ring flash and combine it with uh, um, soft boxes with studio light um, big soft boxes of uh, 50 to 70 uh, centimeters uh, size um, uh, side sizes um, I don't have and don't use twin flash, so we have it here in clinic. But from my point of view, uh, dual twin flash is not very interesting. It can give us uh, light reflections of a quite uh, a, a simple configuration. Um, better to use uh, soft boxes. Uh, of course, twin, twin uh, flash, uh, twin light flash, uh, very good for uh, photo protocol of prostodontists, uh, for those ones who uh, uh, send uh, and interrelate with dental uh, technician laboratory uh, on a distance, uh, when, when they need to send information about shade, uh, teeth color, teeth uh, shade and optical structure. Uh, when they make a picture with the sample of shade scale uh, and try to uh, set it uh, to a dental technician, of course, uh, they need to use something, some light source, which can uh, give small, relatively small reflection size. Uh, dual flash can give us small reflections located on the side verges and uh, uh, and. Uh, probably this is the only one possible uh, light source uh, for this effect because ring flash will uh, apply a huge uh, light reflection right in the middle part of incise or or, or any another tooth we we try to uh, uh, make a picture and this big uh, light reflection in the shape of a ring uh, will uh, and may close all the nuances of optical structure. That's why ring flash is not very good. As for soft boxes, uh, from the same point, um, soft boxes uh, apply huge uh, light reflections on the surface, and uh, these huge light reflections are good for uh, visualization of micro relief the surface uh, textural nuances, but not for uh, reading the uh, the shade and optical features. That's why not the best uh, not the best option for uh, prostodontists. For all other cases, uh, ring flash and soft boxes um, may be used and may cover all the uh, the task we have. So, um, in this uh, Sintrate stone, the green one you use at the moment, Sintrate, uh, no, I, I, I don't think, I don't think so that it's Sintrate, but uh, actually I don't, if I understand you clear, I, I don't uh, know exactly. Uh, after all, it's not very important, probably, the, 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 uh, 
do. Does it seem trip or not? It, it works. <laughs> this is the most important part for me personally. In stage of composite adaptation, you mentioned that we need to, to go one of five one millimeter under the gun. Uh, the sulcus uh, is that uh, would be safe for the health of the gum, for uh, the biological width uh, uh, limited to one. No, actually, biological width uh, limited not with one. It limited with uh, two millimeters. Uh, two millimeters is the, the the biggest depth we can go on the, 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 the gum. Uh, because uh, uh, the the biological um, uh, gingival complex uh, has uh, three millimeters. Uh, one uh, first millimeter is the depth of uh, uh, the uh, um, the under gingiva uh, groove that I don't remember exactly, but that groove of free space then. Epithelial attachment and uh, mm, uh, and another type of attachment. Uh, mm, uh, I forgot this. Forget these words uh, in English. Sorry. Epithelial and uh, the third millimeter is. Uh, uh, yeah. <coughs> sorry, but that. Uh, I will I will try to tell it differently. That third millimeter is the, the last millimeter, the deepest millimeter, uh, is the only one area where where we shouldn't place something, any edge of uh, direct or indirect uh, restoration or veneer. The first two millimeters, uh, including epithelial atta uh, attachment, may be used for uh, for this purpose. We can uh, go under gingiva down to two millimeters but of course with uh, one uh, very important uh, 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 requirement we should avoid any overhangings we should polish that area of composite or it may be a ceramic uh, ceramic and the border of tooth and ceramic veneer uh, perfectly without any imperfections uh, with uh, very uh, perfectly uh, polishing surface. This way we would uh, be able uh, to avoid any problems with uh, uh, gingiva health. After removing the rubber dam, uh, uh, the clamp and try to adjust under excess isn't it useful to use retraction cord to be easier? No, no at all. Because uh, retraction cord actually uh, 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 will bother you and your uh, bore uh, your actions constantly uh, placing there. Because uh, you work exactly in the area you need to uh, release, you need to open. Uh, with, you can do it with a metallic instrument like. Uh, uh, Modella from LM or something like this. Uh, I mean the type of instrument, something pla plain. Mm, uh, you can. You just need to uh, shift by applying a pressure gingivus uh, and uh, the mucosa uh, apically, but retraction cord will uh, take that place where your. Uh, a diamond bore or metallic bore and it and its uh, tip should work uh, and interrelate with the composite should affect the composite you close with uh, a retraction cord the area you need to work in so uh, I think uh, it's not the best decision uh, when you use ethanol before primary application does it uh, dissolve even more uh, the adhesive well, I, I told you if you remember that we use ethanol for uh, uh, overcoming um, and ma making the adhesive preparation of the composite, which were cured uh, less than two hours ago. Uh, with using of uh, ethanol, we remove smear litter which may be left after using a rotary instrument on the surface of composite. Uh, 
we have no other options uh, and dissolvements which may uh, dissolve uh, um, and remove uh, smear layer on the composite. Of course, we can use some another dissolvents, but uh, they are very uh, not very frequently frequent uh, in 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 medicine at all. Uh, the most uh, widespread is just ethanol of 96 or 70 percent. Uh, 70 also same may be sufficient for uh, removing of smear layer. Uh, we. Uh, Mm, uh, ah, if you if you ask about the moment when uh, our work area working area was uh, contaminated with biological liquids with the blood or, or something like this because of the bleeding because of uh, the saliva uh, in this case yes we, we also can apply uh, ethanol and it will be enough uh, sufficient for um, uh, make the surface clear after the contamination but uh, actually with using of ethanol we can remove only uncured part only oxygen inhibited layer from the surface uh, when we cure adhesive system or when we cure uh, a portion of composites uh, the composite itself will be cured and will not be removed by uh, affecting of uh, ethanol only uncured part like um, oxygen inhibited layer on composite or on uh, the surface of adhesive uh, uh, cured layer may be removed but not completely the whole uh, hybrid layer and the whole adhesive uh, layer so it's absolutely safe um, no matter where we use it on composites or on adhesive on the cured adhesive layer or um, for preparation uh, before or after two hours actually no any risks absolutely of course if we would apply on uncured adhesive um, it will be r really not so good but we shouldn't do that it's not adequate in case uh, like a few fluorosis uh, in particular uh, Purchase how to mask how to map how to mask uh, hmm. or in case of uh, hypo mineralized and lost the enamel uh, is about a tune of uh, to complete uh, crown coverage rather than directly near oh wow uh, you mean uh, tune uh, like a uh, bleaching or something like uh, or or you mean something like stains uh, tins tune oh. uh, sorry to understand you uh, sometimes uh, more clear I should use translator because um, I apologize uh, for my English because uh, probably it's uh, it, 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 be, it becomes uh, worth uh, in the period of last two years when I was without international courses and webinars at all uh, now I have a hope that uh, the international programs and uh, and the chances for using an English uh, in, and improving of it will be <laughs> more frequent uh, and I will be better so um, uh, can you please clarify do you mean the bleaching procedure before uh, before the veneer or uh, using uh, tints for covering as the first layer uh, before the la the later uh, uh, following layers of composite um, don't you use space with l uh, left f with felt discs uh, well no but you mean with uh, with that gray discs uh, from Eve Diacom, uh, they can work absolutely good and effectively without any paste. Uh, for some other instruments, you can use paste. For example, this instrument, which I also uh, uh, sometimes use, especially on posture teeth um restorations uh, is uh, disc made of a god bristless we can use it also without paste but we can use it with paste uh from meterium 
Mm, I don't like that pace uh, very much because uh, um, this pace, uh, the mansion pace, has oil uh, as the basis for uh, for it. It's very mm, complicated sometimes to remove it from the surface. Uh, that's why uh, I prefer to use that uh, disc made of a god bristles, um, just pure as it is, without any paint and without water as well. Uh, when we use it dry, uh, the effect is quite nice, especially uh, on uh, in the case of posture teeth restorations, because we have a very deep uh, um, and very sharp features, very deep relief. And we need to reach all that hard to reach areas uh, and we can do it with uh, with uh, this disc uh, and this is actually the only instrument uh, uh, which we may use with uh, with the paste uh, except the paste itself uh, paste uh, prism gloss extra fine sometimes i use it uh, for posture teeth as well I, I just wanted to show you this piece because i have my table here with all my instruments i uh, usually use here this piece is uh, prisma gloss extra fine and for using of it uh, mm, we need to take something like uh, sponges fixed on a special holder the sponge on this holder I hope it, it more or less visible for you and you need to put it there and also th this is one more uh, except uh, the uh, um, God Bristless disc this is one more instrument which we can use uh, and should use with um, with the paste all other instruments without paste <clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sherbakov. Uh, excited to see you in March in Dubai. I excited to really thank you. Thank you for your attention. I hope it was useful. Uh, Why you put the uh, translucent composite in the incisal part and then drill it to the level of palatal shell instead of put palatal shell along? <laughs> I told you it in the very beginning of uh, the first half of the webinar, the main part of the webinar. The point is that uh, clinically we can't, well, uh, it's, it's very complicated to use uh, palatal shell working with bleach restorations because because you need, uh, you have to use clamps. You have to use uh, metallic clamps for uh, uh, shifting, uh, for, uh, um, uh, removing gingiva uh, apically um, and to put uh, the composite under the gingiva level on one or one and a half millimeter because uh, without it you will not be able uh, to get the effect when a new shade white shade uh, comes uh, right from gingiva without any uh, dark, um, you know, uh, dark stripes, dark borders near the gingiva level, uh, near the, the cervical line. So uh, to get these effects and to avoid the problems in these areas, uh, of course, you need to put your composite under the gingiva, and it means in turn that you have to use uh, clamps because you will not be able to do it with just with floss uh, or uh, with a retraction cord of course not because uh, the retraction cord will uh, fill that space where the composites have to be applied um, uh, that's why only um, the isolation with rubber dump and with clamp uh, clamps may be uh, uh, maybe different uh, mainly in my work uh, butterfly clamp type uh, Brinker B uh, 2 0 uh, wingless clamp but nevertheless uh, considering that that we uh, have to use uh, clamps we can't apply uh, we can't apply uh, palatal silicon index um, we can apply uh, it only after uh, uh, forming something like a, 
uh, rollers under the gingiva, um, under the isolation with rubber dome and clamps. Then we need to remove clamps with getting of bleeding. Uh, very high probability that we will face with bleeding after removing of clamps. Uh, so it, it's really complicated. It's really complicated, uh, and uh, um, the the essence of using a palatal index is that we need to determine uh, and uh, clarify the the palatal or wall position, the palatal shell position. Uh, we can do actually the same differently with lesmon of F words. Uh, Without getting in the work working process of big amount of teeth, I told you that we would better to work with one uh, or one and a half teeth. I would say so. One uh, layering a one tooth mainly, and then uh, applying a white sheet on uh, the side walls with uh, um, with less than uh, deformed individu individually uh, deformed matrix. Uh, with the isolation of two teeth. I told you it uh, first day. Uh, just um, I recommend you to watch again and to uh, uh, listen more careful the sentences about the sequence of manipulations because uh, we, we have to deform the sequence because uh, we have problems with anesthesia, we have problems with uh, and the requirement to bring the composite under the gingiva, we have to use clamps, uh, and we have to uh, done this work with 20 teeth, which is quite big number. We need to do it only, in my case, in the three days, three and a half, quite short time. Uh, and we need uh, to um, uh, decrease as possible uh, you know, painful feelings uh, in our patients. So he he have to be to heal to feel himself good after all that actions. So, so that's that's why my recommendations to work uh, without palatal silicon index uh, to work in the method of free modeling or freehand. The the method uh, I used for that uh, teeth two incisors uh, and which I most frequently use last maybe one, one and a half, two years, one, one, one year, I think. Uh, uh, in case like uh, Phil Rose's to change to, oh, to change to, uh, so you, you mean um, uh, change to another sheet uh, with the uh, with first layer of uh, tin, something like this. Uh, well, uh, I don't think that it's a good decision because uh, you see uh, all uh, very intensively opaque, uh, flowable uh, composites uh, we have, which can uh, completely close any discolorations. Uh, they're not very good mechanically because they contain a uh, very big amount of uh, pigments inside and the, such a big amount of pigment will bring in turn to a not very perfect construction of polymerization chains after curing. Uh, usually all the pigments we can use, we can uh, uh, find uh, on the market uh, tints and intensive uh, pigments com com uh, based on composite, they're much weaker mechanically rather than a uh, regular composite. That's why uh, if uh, it will be first layer and it will be in contact with uh, dental tissues, uh, we, we need to um, care about the, uh, the mechanical characteristics of the first layer. Um, so that's why uh, applying of it from this point will be not the best decision. Another point is that uh, usually, I, of course I try to use uh, this way, uh, maybe not in case of flu roses, but in case when I uh, try to cover dark shade 
of one tooth and make it, uh, you know, to solve the problem of local discoloration uh, 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 and uh, because of uh, previous uh, endodontic treatment. So uh, when we apply something like an intensive pigment based on composites with a thin layer, first layer uh, on the tooth, even if it's dark or full of uh, uh, tints or full of uh, um, uh, how can I say it? Uh, 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 dots or or um, uh, some spots, white spots or brown spots depends of uh, the degree of fluorosis, uh, the degree of changes. So we can cover the previous structure, but we uh, we get in the end after applying of this first layer very intensive another shade, usually uh, with uh, with some orange uh, or yellowish inside. I don't know, uh, sometimes with bluish. And I, we need to develop some uh, an additional recipe for covering this unusual shade. Uh, so uh, we we just change, in my opinion, uh, change uh, discoloration from uh, one characteristic to another characteristic. That's why when I work with uh, extremely dark uh, and um, spotted teeth, like uh, in case of fluorosis, I usually take uh, you probably remember from the first part of the webinar. Uh, which was a week ago, um, white opaque from uh, Asterix, very, uh, uh, very dense optically uh, with a very high opacity level, uh, like pigments, but this is a regular uh, composite, white opaque. And uh, you can take this uh, sheet, mix it, with uh, you shouldn't use pure you can mix it with some another shade like uh, uh, for for instance uh, mm, ceramics duo d2 or any opaque of warm shade like a2 a3 maybe b2 uh, in the, in the ratio of 50 to 50 percent with white pack uh, and in this case, you need to uh, mix them uh, thoroughly with the getting of homogeneous maize uh, and uh, apply this layer as the first. It will be warm enough, it will be uh, opaque enough to cover almost everything located under it. Uh, and this way, I uh, usually uh, close the, the uh, very dark uh, initial shade of the patient's teeth if it's necessary but it should be darker than in this case because here we have a, something like a B4, B4 and a half and only one layer of white was uh, sufficient uh, for uh, covering this shade completely and uh, to convert it into a new one as you remember uh, I mean the incisal part, uh, not the cervical incisor part. You, you put a bulk of composite and then remove it uh, with pora. Uh, after no, I understand what you mean. I understand what I mean, but uh, I told you that using of palatal index, which we apply palately, in case of bleach restorations very extremely complicated uh, way of this type of works execution because you will have to take in work at least four or six teeth to apply to fix palatal index on its place but you will not be able to fix it initially because you have to apply clamps on each tooth you work with. On each tooth you cover with white shade. You need to put a clamp, metallic clamp on each tooth uh, to bring the 
composed under gingiva. And only after doing it uh, with all six teeth, and after removing all these clamps, you will be able to put your um, palatal index on its place. And you will have to increase the volume of anesthesia injection. Because you work with six teeth, the layering in scale of six teeth will be very long. Uh, after removing of it, you will have to, after removing of isolation of rubber dam, you will have to take dam and bore uh, all the stripes and remove the excesses near the gingiva. And it's quite painful uh, manipulations. And to make them uh, less uh, uncomfortable for the patient, you will have to uh, add some anesthesia and it in quite big volume and the anesthesia was just been uh, in that areas few hours ago and you can uh, increase the probability of negative side effects from soft coming from soft tissues which were anesthetized too much and it's not very uh, uh, of course, it depends of stylistic. It depends of the manner of work of uh, any personal uh, execution uh, uh, of any doctor, because we all work differently. But I work, in my case, uh, with only one aim, with only one idea, to make all the steps on maximum quality level. I don't care of timing. I don't care of everything. I need to make it uh, as good as I just can. Uh, and to do it this way, to do the restoration on high level of uh, uh, detailing, uh, we probably would face with the same problems I described you. That's why, uh, considering that uh, using of palatal index, uh, very complicated, more complicated than in order, uh, ordinary cases, that in cases of natural shade restorations, uh, it's very complicated in case of bleach restorations. Uh, I, in my practice, I decided to avoid it at just as well as uh, uh, professionals and doctors who work long time in this genre, uh, in genre of uh, bleach restorations uh, to do it really good uh, without any uh, imperfections or at least with the minimal level of them uh, without any unfinished areas uh, with a very high price on it uh, as I can see everyone decided to avoid uh, palatal index as the component as the method which will complicate the work highly and will not help us. I hope you understand me. Thanks a lot. It's nice to have such webinar. Try to make it to one live patient and good for you. Uh, for direct veneer as well as uh, to interior and posture restoration. Thanks again. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope it was really useful. Uh, at least uh, I can say that it was sincerely and it was just uh, a pure practical uh, experience translated uh, to you within all this timing. Have you had any problems concerning uh, discoloration or other provoked by the use of modeling resin? No, actually not. Uh, if we use um, modeling resin devoted uh, and developed for this aim now. Uh, sometimes some of my colleagues uh, told me on some courses, I heard about it, that uh, using of second bottle of um, Optimon EFL as the alternative for modeling resin, because it's not, actually it's not modeling resin, uh, they face with uh, this coloration. Uh, and uh, sometimes when uh, doctors told me that they use uh, S modeling resin um, flowable composite, which is quite strange decision, but nevertheless, in, in, generally it's possible from the point of chemical uh, 
um, conditions, uh, everything will be good. But it's not very, uh, um, it's not very uh, useful to uh, to apply flowable material because it's not flowable enough. It's not liquid. It's just flowable composites, quite quite tense. Uh, so that's why in these cases they uh, faced with problems of discoloration working with the bleach sheet because uh, before uh, they uh, successfully use it working with natural shades uh, uh, but when we use bleach shades this factor may uh, uh, may form some discoloration at least a local one somewhere in the restoration Well, guys, I would like to uh, thank you uh, once again for your attention. It was a really nice time. Um, if you will have um, any questions about the topic, this topic we have overcome or another one, uh, any questions, please feel yourself free to ask me. Um, you can use Instagram for this purpose uh, and uh, text me in direct. Also, pay, I would like to pay your attention on our website zendentstream.ru uh, where you can find the products from Zen Gears, uh, our wonderful brushes, which I use on the stage of demonstration and also uh, Zen Gears polishing kit with uh, uh, Jota polishers inside with a good price and also many uh, events uh, in the future will be posted here will be announced here uh, with the uh, possibility to uh, get in to make a registration also uh, international course in Dubai uh, I would glad to see you there if you decide if you would decide it um, you can believe me that it will be something absolutely unbelievably good. Um, those ones who was on our hands-on courses uh, will definitely uh, say the same, I think, because we try to do it very, very uh, unusually in non-standard way and very intensely from the point of uh, uh, educational process and efforts so thank you very much uh, for uh, see you guys later uh, on another uh, events and maybe on another webinars uh, which will be probably quite soon maybe in December in the end of December or at least uh, January Bye, guys.